Back in 1918, the Spanish flu pandemic killed as many as 50 million people worldwide, and that was twice as many that were killed in World War I. Now, back then, some of the same debates that we've been having over the last few months have been taking place. Uh, what about masks? What about meeting? What about this? What do we do? And, and like now, they had a nationwide shutdown, and, and churches were involved in that shutdown. Now, John Schmaltzbauer, a professor in the Department of Religious Studies at Missouri University, M Missouri State University, he studied how churches made it through back then. And he wrote this. He said, you can look at newspapers from all over the United States that have been digitized and quickly discover that they're working through some of the same issues that we're working through today. Should we stop meeting together? How are we going to continue to, to have faith communities without being able to be in the same room as each other? Um, it amazed me, but, but it, it's a, it sounds like the same discussions that we've had here at Regen. But when the church is closed back then, the main difference, and even though there's a lot of similarities through the struggles, when the church is closed back then, they didn't have the blessing of Zoom or Facebook Live or YouTube. When the churches closed, they closed. They literally quit meeting together. They quit seeing each other. I mean, literally, there was almost nothing. Now, looking back and reading about how the, the churches functioned or how they didn't function at that time, I was amazed to, to find that one of the things that began to take place was um, newspapers started including sermons in their content. The Birmingham News in Alabama was one of many papers that offered to print sermons, to, to print service outlines, scriptures and announcements that were sent in by various clergy. Uh, they did it because they wanted to help people worship at home. Can you imagine that today? In one of his sermons um, that he submitted, um, Reverend Fletcher Parrish, he uh, um, preached on Genesis 26, 43. He was the pastor of 11th Avenue Methodist Church. And in this message, he said, meditation is very profitable for the soul, but the rush of the world is so great at present that very little time is given to cogitation and reflection. Men think they have no time to walk out in the fields for contemplation or to sit quietly by the fireside and muse. However, we have a God-given opportunity for this helpful indulgence by reason of this unique Sabbath which has dawned upon us. Have you ever thought about the last few months being a God-given opportunity for us to really spend time getting closer to Him than we ever have before? I mean, we've spent a lot of time complaining, myself included, but have we really looked at this as the chance to focus on God and, and really begin to grow even more into who he desires for us to be? Fletcher goes on and he says, out of necessity, our churches are closed and all public gatherings must be discontinued. We cannot go motoring and we would not go to business if we could. And even the fields are dangerous, lest we should come in contact with goldenrod and ragweed and take influenza. But we can sit by the fire and give ourselves to thought and reflection, which will bring great profit to us. Fletcher looked at the influenza pandemic um, he looked at when the churches were closed as an opportunity to have, in a sense, an extended Sabbath where people could even get closer to the Lord than they already were. Professor Schmaltzbauer at Missouri State said that pretty much all the people had back then was what they called the home altar. And he said there was a real Victorian emphasis on domesticity and religion in the home. I'm not going to try to say that word again because I didn't get it right the first time. <laughs> there was a real Victorian emphasis on religion in the home and, and staying in uh, your home. And there were lots of devotional materials, books and pamphlets and so forth that people used to kind of have piety in the home. What he's saying is there was a huge emphasis on being close to God, growing in your faith at home. 
There was way more of an emphasis on personal responsibility back then when it came to spiritual growth and getting close and, and staying close to God. And let's just say it as it is. Religion, Christianity specifically, was more important in a lot of ways then than it is now. And I, and I don't believe that the pandemic, um, I, I don't believe that the pandemic has helped a lot of us make growing in our faith more of a priority. Now, maybe at the beginning, because we didn't know what the heck was going on. We were, we were scared of the unknown of it all. And, and I would dare say that um, a lot of us, though, are getting comfortable in our new normal. We're getting pretty settled. We've gotten used to following the guidelines that have been given to help us stay healthy during this. But I wonder if we've thought about what we need to do to stay spiritually healthy through not just the last few months, but from this point forward. I mean, I believe at the beginning, we were really good at, at relying on God and, and God and finding our help in Him. I mean, I remember being in this church space when it first started and, 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 and doing a message and just encouraging Psalm 121, where does my help come from? We, we had an emphasis and we were all together. We were separately together and we were seeking after God. But I think that maybe... We've gotten comfortable again, and we're settling into maybe where we were before this started. We need to get back to more of an emphasis on the personal responsibility of growing in Christ. And look, I believe the church is important. I, 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 I believe that you, 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 look, you can't successfully follow Jesus without the encouragement, comfort, and accountability that a church family brings. But, but the church doesn't save you and the church can't live your life for you. For some of us where we've been separated for so long, we're realizing that maybe we've allowed Sunday morning, we've allowed our gathering We've allowed other people to live our relationship with Christ for us instead of us personally living it ourselves. I mean, we need each other, but ultimately our faith begins and ends with us. Now, in his book, Coronavirus and Christ, John Piper said, Physical evil is a parable, a drama, a signpost pointing to the moral outrage of rebellion against God. Physical pain is God's trumpet blast to tell us that something is dreadfully wrong in the world. Disease and deformity are God's pictures in the physical realm of what sin is like in the spiritual realm. I believe that, that we need to, to really begin to let what's going on in the physical realm point us towards the spiritual realm. And we've got to start not so much worrying and we need to be concerned, but we need to start being even more concerned about how spiritual healthy we are. If we're not spiritually healthy, then we're not going to be able to really, honestly, we're not going to be able to really <laughs> successfully exist in the physical realm. Now, just as we have guidelines to help us physically stay healthy, this morning I want to just talk about a couple spiritual guidelines that I think will help us stay connected to God. Things that will help us make our relationship with Him more of a priority again. Because, I don't know if you've noticed, but we need Jesus now more than ever. Now, to help us do this, we're going to look at Psalm 1 in the Old Testament. Verse 1 starts out, and if you have a Bible, a Bible app, please open up and follow along because I, I want us to really get this this morning. Verse 1 uh, of Psalm 1 in the Old Testament, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. 
According to the guidelines that we've been given concerning the coronavirus, we've been told this. This is what it says on the, uh, the, the Red Cross website concerning the guidelines for how we should live during this pandemic. It says to avoid close contact with people who are sick. And to do this, we should stay home as much as possible and avoid non-essential travel. We should practice social distancing by keeping at least six feet, about two arms length, uh, apart away from each other, especially if we go out in public. And we need to also stay connected with loved ones through video and phone calls, texts, and social media. Now, during all this, again, I, I want to stress because I think this is so important. While we have been so um, intentional with social distancing, I think that we've gotten really comfortable and we've been spiritually distancing. What I mean is I don't think we've been paying attention to how we've been drifting away from God. And yeah, I said earlier, at first, we were scared because we didn't know what was going on. Um, can we catch this? Could we die from this? We, we just didn't know. And, and listen, that fear, we were rightfully, uh, right. it was rightfully uh, so that we, we would be scared, that we would be um, up in the air, that, that some of us would be terrified. I mean, the virus has been and is still very serious. Some of you have gotten sick. Or, or some of you know someone who's gotten sick, even in our church family. Some of you know someone who has passed away from it. And we grieve for them with you. But it seems like the longer we've been in this, when it comes to the spiritual, we've let our guard down and we've let Satan manipulate us. We have got to make sure that we don't allow our legitimate fear or grief to be an opportunity for the devil to get in the way to slowly separate us and distance us from God. It says in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, and I love how the message paraphrase puts this, uh, starting with verse 8. It, it says, keep a cool head, stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. For some of us, we've let our guard down. And not only have we let our fear guide us, but we've sought out the counsel of others during this time instead of God. And listen, maybe at the beginning we were seeking after God, but the more comfortable we've gotten into this, we've let our guard down and we're allowing other voices to speak into our life. And I remember not too far away in this very space, I talked about how we need to be careful of who we're listening to and the voices we're allowing to speak into our life. But over the last few months, I wonder if we've been walking in the counsel of the wicked or standing in the way of sinners or sitting in the seat of mockers. Maybe we've let the media guide our steps instead of seeking out the Holy Spirit or the help of other believers. Or maybe we've been listening to our neighbors or we've been listening to friends. We've been getting caught up in the conspiracy theory stuff and we've slowly been stepping away from our relationship with God. Maybe some of us have let our circumstances direct our influences. And let me ask, how's that been working for us? We need to stop socially distance, distancing ourselves from the Lord and from our church family. Well, how can you stay connected? Especially, how can you stay connected to the Lord? Well, the psalmist here tells us in, in Psalm 1, starting with verse 2, he says that, um, talking about the man who doesn't walk with the wicked, all that. In verse 2, he says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Let me ask you, have you ever had a season in your life where you have meditated day and night on the word? 
where you just couldn't get enough of it, where you you were you were just longing to talk and speak with God, to listen to him, to to listen to his word and have it get into your life, into your heart, into your soul. It's all you thought about. I mean, as Christ followers, how, how are we going to know how to live and navigate through life, through whatever comes, whether it's a pandemic or a job loss or a, uh, a relationship failure or struggles, a uh, health crisis, whatever it is, how are we going to know how to live if we're not listening to him? I believe that God speaks to us through a, a, a few different ways. I believe he speaks through circumstances that are, about, uh, that are out of our control. Things happen that we have no part in. They just happen. Life happens. And I believe God speaks to us through those things. I believe God speaks through consequences. Anybody made a stupid choice? You've made a, a stupid mistake and you're dealing with the consequences of it? God speaks through those things. And, and we could get together and we could spend hours talking about this. God speaks through other people. How many times have you had someone come into your life and they've said something that opened your eyes to how you were following Jesus or how you were not following Jesus? Or, or maybe they've spoken to your life and, and they've told you about changes you need to make, things that they see. And maybe they opened your eyes to um, or, or, or they gave a warning or they lovingly came down on you pretty hard to help you get back on track. Have you ever had someone do that? God speaks through people. But I believe, though, he primarily speaks through his word. It says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and this is the message again. God means what he says. What he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey. God gives us his word to guide us no matter the circumstance, no matter what choices we make. He uses it to cut through everything to help us see how we can follow him and how we can best live no matter what's going on. And I, we, we've talked about it before, but I believe we need to be reminded that when we read the Bible, when we get into it, it is God literally speaking to us. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting with verse 16. Again, the message paraphrase. Uh, I just love how the message paraphrase put these verses we're using this week. Um, start with verse 16 in uh, chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. Every part of Scripture is God-breathed and useful one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Stop right there. This is God's word. God's word is him speaking to us, training us to know how to live to please him. Verse 17, through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the tasks God has for us. God's word is him speaking, helping us know how to live, how to serve, how to follow Jesus. It, it puts us together and it shapes us to do what he has for us to do. And listen, if it's God breathed, then we need to live as, we, as if we believe it is him talking to us. It always amazes me. But the Bible, it, 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 it really is, and I read it and get into it, it's amazing to me, but it really is so relevant to what's going on today. We've just got to be in it to see that. And listen, the, the people who say that the Bible isn't for today, the people who say that the Bible isn't relevant, were those, those are the people who aren't really in it. They aren't in it enough to know about it. And I've always heard that, that you really shouldn't speak on something unless you know enough about it. You're knowledgeable enough about it to speak about it. I, that, that, that principle, are you knowledgeable enough about it to speak on it? To live by it? 
You know, so many times we find ourselves in situations and the first person we want to blame is God. And if we would have been in the word, we would have known that that wasn't something we should have been fooling with to begin with. But we're not listening to him speak. Do you delight yourself in his word? Do you desire to be in it? Do you find satisfaction or joy in hearing from him? If not, you need to start making it a priority. And there are so many resources for you to, to get into the Bible, to begin to get into the Word and listen to God. One of the most convenient right now is the YouVersion app. It's, a, it's an app that you can get on really any smart device, on a tablet. You can, you can get to it on your computer, just Bible.com, and that'll get you to it. And listen, it has so many different Bible translations. It has different versions. It has paraphrases. It has so many versions, ways to read the Bible that will help you understand what God is saying to you. It's got reading plans that range in various amounts of time and topics, books of the Bible. I mean, you name it, they've pretty much got it. I just finished this week. I finished up a, a reading plan on uh, the book of Mark. I love the book of Mark, and it was awesome. They're all very good. There, there's one called Anxious for Nothing. There's one called Anxiety to Peace. Those are seven-day studies. There's one uh, maybe you want to really begin to get deep in the Bible or, or get in deep with your relationship with God, and you, you, you don't know where to start. Well, there's one called Start Here, First Steps with Jesus. It's 15 days. It's actually got audio content to it, so you can listen each day. There's a seven-day devotional called the, the Bible Explained that has videos with it. I mean, there is so much there. There's really no excuse the church has a subscription to Right Now Media, which is kind of like a Bible study Netflix. It's got a ton of video Bible studies. It's got uh, cartoons and shows for kids on there. Uh, it, it's really, really awesome. I mean, if you're interested in that, you could shoot me a message with your email address and, and I can send you an invite to it. And you just set it up and you can log on. Uh, you can get the app on uh, Roku, the Right Now Media app. And, and it's amazing that, that, that you can get it and have it on your TV to watch any time to begin to listen to God. I mean, there are uh, awesome study Bibles. There's the NIV study Bible, the English Standard Version study Bible. There's the Life Application Bible. There are a ton of different versions of study Bibles that you can get to listen to God. I mean, some of us are still going through the Core 52 book that we started in January. And listen, it's, 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 um, um, it's not too late to get involved in it. I mean, I've been up and down in the book because of everything that's been going on, just being transparent. But there's uh, uh, four months left. It's not too late to get into it. You could jump in and join. Uh, there's the 30 Thursday night Crave group that talks about Core 52. I mean, you could be involved in that. Get a book. Get on Amazon and get the Kindle version. You could get it quick and you could start reading. It's amazing what it has to say. But it's all about listening and letting God speak. But if you're going to be in a relationship, you've also got to speak back. You can't just read the Bible. In a relationship, it's a two-way street. It's listening and talking, talking and listening. And, and not only do we need to listen to God, but we also need to spend time talking to Him. How much time do you spend talking to God? And I'm not talking about when things are bad. But... When you're in desperate need or you're scared, I know you talk then, but how much time do you just spend talking with him, listening and actually talking? I mean, Bible reading is a part of that relationship, but you need to spend some time letting him know your heart. And we could get into the debate of he already knows my heart, but he wants to hear it from you. One of the best ways that's helped me over the years is journaling, where I get a notebook or an actual journal, and, and I just spend time writing to God. Because just being transparent, I have a hard time, squirrel, <laughs> paying attention sometimes to things. And so writing my thoughts out helps me collect my thoughts, helps me uh, get them in order, and just helps me be able to express myself. Maybe you should get a notebook or a journal or uh, get on your computer, get a tablet, something, anything that you can record your thoughts and then begin to spend some time with God. 
One of the ways that's really helped me is um, what I call the ACTS process, the word A-C-T-S, ACTS. And I don't know what it's actually called, but but I call it that. It's it's a, a process that helps me be able to put my thoughts down on paper and, and organize them. Now, what you do is you take the word acts and you separate your quiet time, your 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 discussion, your your talking to God into four different sections. You take the word A, and that's adoration. That's when you praise God for things, where you acknowledge Him for who He is. There's confession. C, the next section, and that's where you spend time actually confessing your struggles, the, the temptations you're fighting. Maybe you own up to the things that you've done that are separating you from God. You spend some time writing those out. There's the, the letter T, thanksgiving. You have a section where you just thank God for the blessings in your life. Take time to, to appreciate what he's done for you, what he continues to do for you. Then there's S. S is supplication. Uh, supplication is a, a Bible word. It's, a, it's a, a church word that just literally means praying for others and, and praying for the things that are laying on your heart. I guarantee you that if you uh, take some time and begin to, to, to journal and, and use that, that will help you in amazing ways. It will help you and you'll be, ama you'll be able to go back through and see how uh, a month from now, how God answered your prayers or see where you were and how far you've come. It's amazing. But you need to talk with God. And there are other ways to do it. There are actual scriptural journals and there are Bible uh, calendars that you can get that have sections in it where you can spend time with God. Find something that will work for you and get into his word. Whatever works, do it. Because we've got to. So we don't continue spiritually distancing ourselves. Now let's look at verse 3. In Psalm 1, he is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. It says here that if we get the right influences in our life, we have the right people around us. If we let God's word guide us, if we let him speak to us, then we are going to get closer to God. We are going to grow. We are going to be spiritually healthy. We won't be spiritually distant from him or, or from other believers. In fact, we'll long to be with other believers. We'll be healthy and we'll begin to produce fruit. And why does a tree produce fruit? A tree produces fruit to provide for others. As we grow, we'll have a desire to spiritually help other people, which will lead to others giving their lives to Christ, which will lead to others, which will lead to others. And it all begins with us getting close to God again. And, and just so we know, when it says that whatever he does prospers, it doesn't mean that he gets rich or that he never faces struggles. What it means is that no matter what comes, he will stand and he won't wither because he knows that the Lord is standing with him and that he'll grow in the face of whatever comes. That's what God desires. And in James chapter 1, I love how the message paraphrase puts this, starting with verse 2. Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. You might think it's weird, but when we looked at what um, Fletcher Parrish, that, that, that pastor said in his sermon in that paper in Birmingham, Alabama, when he said we need to look at this as an, a positive thing, that we will profit from it if we look at it as a time to look inward and then look towards God. It, we need to look at it as, as an amazing thing. James says here that when we face struggles, when we have times where we really need to look towards God, we need to look at those challenges as gifts because they provide the opportunity for God to show up, to make himself evident. And he will, especially in us and through us. And when that happens, people will be able to see him in us and we'll draw people to us. 
John Piper said in his book, what God is doing in the coronavirus is showing us graphically, painfully, that nothing this world that nothing in this world gives the security and satisfaction that we find in the infinite greatness and worth of Jesus. This global pandemic takes away our freedom of movement, our business activity, and our face-to-face -face relations. It takes away our security and our comfort, and, the, and in the end, it may take away our lives. The reason God exposes us to such losses is to rouse us to rely on Christ. Or to put it another way, the reason he makes calamity the occasion for suffering or offering Christ to the world is that the supreme, all-satisfying greatness of Christ shines more brightly when Christ sustains joy in suffering. Psalm 1 finishes by saying, Not so the wicked. They're like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Our prayer this morning should be that God, during this coronavirus, will show himself to us. So that as he is working in and through us, as we are leaning on him, as we are talking with him and letting him speak to us, we are not socially distancing ourselves from him or from others. We're going to grow. Our prayer needs to be God grow in us and help us shine so people will see how good you are, how great you are. I mean, I believe we need to literally pray, God, help us to be righteous, to be close to you, whatever we're going through. God, watch over us and help us reach those in the middle of the craziness around us. May we be closer to you, God, than we ever have before. And as we do that, push us to be closer to those who can help us so then we can be close to those who need you. Let's let that be our prayer. Amen and amen. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video today and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can stay connected with what's going on with us at Regen. Make sure you invite a friend so they can be in touch. And hey, if nobody's told you, God loves you more than you could ever know and so do you.